Hey guys, Dr. Sean here. I got asked a question for our mailbag for this week. Say, hey doc, what do you think about sweeteners? You know, artificial versus real. Is one better than the other? So, you know, as a rule of thumb, here's the deal. The body can handle a lot of stress. It can handle different foods. It can be challenged. And we all like sugars, right? We all like the, the taste it gives us, whether it's a fake sweetener or a real one. But the key to this is how much damage do they do to the body? And that's the trick. None of them are good for you. There are none, okay? They just don't work that way. So you have to look at that and say, all right, well, if they're not good for me, which ones hurt me the least? Because that's really what we're asking here. So now we're looking at real sugar versus the artificial, the fake guys. The artificial ones are all created in a lab, right? They're all test tube babies, for lack of better words. And so they're mixed in the lab. Some guy's sitting there with his concoctions and mixing back and forth and creating something that's sweet. Now, what we know about this is that the artificial sweeteners, depending on the ones you use, whether it's aspartame or NutraSweet or saccharin or any of those varieties, Splenda, they're in that same family. They tend to be three to 500 times sweeter than table sugar. Three to 500 times sweeter. They're so sweet that they're actually bitter when you taste them. And that's why when you drink a diet soda, a diet cola, uh, any kind of diet drink of any kind, you can kind of taste that weirdness in them. You'll see it in gums a lot of times that they use these things. Now, why do they use them? They're really sweet, they're really cheap, so they can get them easier than they can sugars and things of that nature. So we look at this and we say, well, gosh, if that's the case, but they're really, really sweet, does that affect my biology? Does it affect me in some way? Now, here's what we found. Over the years of studying this now, we've known that since we've introduced the artificial sweeteners into our food chain, we've seen an alarming increase in neurologic disorders. Now, what does that mean? Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, all these things have gone up as this has. Now, is it a coincidence? Maybe. Is there a direct link? There are several studies out there that are showing there is a cause-effect direct link. So we look at that and think, gosh, it damages the nervous system. Well, then it would affect other things theoretically, and it does. We've seen it linked directly to depression, directly to anxiety, directly to immune suppression. It weakens you. It's been linked to coronary artery disease and heart disease and stroke and diabetes and weight gain. How's that for a kicker? You're taking an artificial diet product to avoid putting weight on and it actually forces you to gain more than table sugar. That's how this works. So we look at that and we think, gosh, so when this stuff gets inside me, it breaks down to a whole host of different chemicals. You know, the chemicals are all corrosive to the body. Many of them have been linked directly to cancers. And we say to ourselves, man, I don't want to be eating that every day. Imagine if you're taking something every day, whoo, that just increased your risk for cancer by 20%. And you do it every day, 20, 40, 60, 80. And all of a sudden you get something, you're like, my gosh, how'd this happen? I've always been so good. No, not always. So then we go look at the natural side of things and we look at table sugar. Now table sugar, as long as it's not refined, and when they refine it, they remove what they call the impurities out of it. The impurities are the vitamins, the minerals, and the enzymes. It's the things that actually make it worthwhile. It's the things that would make it somewhat a food. Raw cane sugar isn't that bad for you. It's not great, but it's not that bad. But once you start breaking it down and you start processing it and it becomes that crystal clear white sugar that you use, now is when you get into trouble. They removed all the real benefit of it. Now you've got nothing left but the stimulant. And a lot of times it doesn't even come from cane sugar anymore. It comes from beets. They'll break beets down. Certain brands use only beet sugar. And it's that white, pure color. So you look at that and think, well, beets are really red. What do you got to do to it to get it really white? Right? You start thinking about this processing concept. Now, it's in everything, of course, and we see it all the time. So it goes back to this idea. What do you do? In my practice, I use something called Just Like Sugar. It's what it is. A friend of mine invented this years ago, and it's a chicory root. Now, chicory root is really, really high in fiber. And you'll see this with stevia as well, right? It's got that fibery thing. The difference is I don't like the aftertaste of stevia. This is not one of my favorites. Just like sugar doesn't have it. It doesn't have that aftertaste, but it's gonna take a little bit. You almost wanna clean your palate, get it used to normal food again, and then introduce a sweetener. 
because if you're used to the diet things and those synthetics, guys, those are, again, three to 500 times more potent and powerful than table sugar. It's gonna take a little bit to reset those, those mechanisms. But the nice thing about it is if you're gonna use something, I like to just like sugar sparingly. You know, a little here, a little there. Try to get your sugars from your fruits. Try to get out of your vegetables and your foods that way. And if you wanna bake cookies and things like that, that's okay occasionally. But always make the choice for the natural. So I hope this helps you. I would avoid the artificial sweeteners if it was me. I would look for an alternative. One of my favorites, again, I like the Just Like Sugar. Okay, take care, guys. I'm the Robin Hood of Healthcare, Dr. Sean. See ya.